welcome to Our Towns, a local access TV show put on by Mount Blue TV that is focused on the communities and the people of Livermore, Livermore Falls, and Jay. Thank you so much for joining us today. I am Lisa Kaim, and I represent that area in the Maine Senate. And today on our show, we are going to learn more about the Lions Club. So I personally have not known much about the Lions Club. Uh, Growing up, I guess, and probably like many of you, you see the sign and you drive by it a lot. You recognize their presence in a lot of the communities, but what do you know about them? So today we're going to learn a little bit more. And uh, thank you so much, uh, Bruce, for being here with us and also Al. And you both are members of the J Livermore Livermore Falls Lions Club. and But we just talked and that has a broader reach than that. So. Um, if you could just tell us uh, where you're from, you know, what town you live in, and what your involvement is, how you got started with Lions. Okay, well, I'm, a, I'm from the town of Wilton, mm -hmm. and uh, I joined the uh, Livermore Falls Lions Club uh, after being a Lions member with Wilton, oh, okay. which is an excellent club, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I, I helped start the club in J. Livermore Falls, and my wife had joined that club, and mm -hmm. And so that was the reason I decided to transfer it to the Jay, the Jay Limo Falls Club. Mm -hmm. You're following your wife. Following my wife. <laughs> and, Very good. Yeah. And Al, how about you? I, I happen to live in Fayette. Okay. I spent 78 and a half years of my life in Winthrop, mm -hmm. and then we moved to the suburbs there in 2013. I had uh, 47 and a half years as a member of the Winthrop Lions Club, mm -hmm. and. Uh, they were a good old boys club there that didn't really want women in the club. My wife wanted to join. And uh, we, when we moved to Fayette, we were only six miles from Livermore Falls. Right. So I transferred to the J. Livermore Falls Lions Club, and she became a member. That's great. And she's now the secretary of the club, and I'm currently the president of the club. <laughs> Forty years ago, I was president of the Winthrop Club. Wonderful. And who knew that our community would be so leading as to be the first uh, first to allow women in? Is that the way it is? Were we the no, first? No, no, There was a lot of clubs. That, oh, there was a lot. Uh, there was a lot of them there that allowed women in there, but went, went through, just chose that uh, right. to be what I call the status quo. The good old boys club and yeah. what have you. Yeah. And uh, when I, I brought a, in 2013, when I moved, the first meeting that I went to in the fall in Winthrop, I brought an application for her in and said uh, that she's applying, and they oh. <laughs> and then I says, well, I've, I've got something for you. Good. I'm so, going to transfer my active membership to the J. Livermore Falls Lions Club, and she's going to join there, wonderful. and I will retain associate membership in the Winthrop Club, and for 40 years I was the historian and I, nobody would take it over and I said I'll continue as the historian mm -hmm. and also I was the chaplain doing uh, at funeral homes when we lost a, lost a member there doing memorial service. Oh, okay. I couldn't get anybody to replace me for that so I retained that so I'm still doing that. Busy with, man. With, 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 with the Winthrop clubs. Club yeah, uh, wonderful. as well as as being very active in mm -hmm. the Jay Livermore Falls Club. Wonderful. So, Bruce, maybe you could tell us history of the Lions Club. What, you know, I, we spoke earlier, you mentioned it's a worldwide organization and it's a service organization, right? So, can you just tell me a little bit about the history of the club and, and maybe of Lions Club internationally and then, and then more specifically that, the one that's local to us? Okay. Yeah, uh, Lions Club International was started back in 1917, mm -hmm. and it was by an insurance man uh, the name of Melvin Jones. And the reason he started that was he thought, and he started with business people, but he thought that uh, the business people by starting this club could serve, be, serve their communities. Mm -hmm. And so that was the main reason for Lions. And then it went on to develop into up to 1925 when Helen Keller, uh, uh, spoke to him and asked the Lions if they'd be, be Knights of the Blind. Mm -hmm. So at that point, Lions Club not only started purpose to serve the, their communities, but also to take on eyesight care. Okay. 
okay? And so then it kept developing with different needs uh, up until the present date, uh, where now we're the largest service club organization in the world. Oh, and, wow. and also we have the largest uh, uh, service foundation in the world. Mm -hmm. And what and uh, what that com uh, encompasses is is we have over 40, we have forty nine thousand clubs in uh, throughout two hundred and ten geographical countries and, and areas geographical mm -hmm. areas mm -hmm. and uh, we have uh, close to a million and a half lion members oh, in the world in the world okay and so that so that. Any time that you see one of these disasters happen uh, throughout the world, uh, there's probably a Lions Club close by that can serve that. Mm -hmm. And we serve that through our foundation. Mm -hmm. Now our foundation started in 1968, mm -hmm. and uh, last year was a kind of a, a figure where we went over a billion dollars. In the foundation. In the foundation. Wow. And put it out through 1,300 grants. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So uh, we serve uh, not only our communities and our country, but globally, mm -hmm. and uh, we uh, we serve uh, site, of course, as we talked to. Yeah. Then we've gone into uh, youth programs, mm -hmm. and we serve humanitarian causes. Uh, we serve hunger, diabetes, childhood cancer, mm -hmm. and environment. Uh, so we've taken all that, that on. Mm -hmm. and so for each club locally, what they choose to take on, is that sort of dependent on who's in the club and what they see as the, the needs that they most want to get involved in? Because of course, there's an unending amount of things that a person could do, right? So how do you, how do you choose as a club where your focus will be? Well, first thing in a club is we have an orientation uh, program, which Lionel gives quite often. And we try to stick within what Lions Club International wants us to do. Mm -hmm. Which, so we want to serve not only locally, but, but globally. Mm -hmm. Now, many clubs uh, uh, only say focus on their own community. Mm -hmm. uh, their membership, they get together and, and they find the different needs. And in some cases, they, they might see a need of uh, of a, of a child pack. Mm -hmm. And so then they'll come to the foundation and see if we can get a grant for that, mm -hmm. and which we do. And matter of fact, uh, uh, we found out that the uh, Good Shepherd Food Bank, for example, uh, they needed a large generator uh, in case the power went out mm -hmm. and they wouldn't want to lose all their food right, in, the, in right. the storage building. So we, we uh, put in a $150,000 grant and bought a generator for there. Mm -hmm. And I could go on and on on that right. stuff, but I won't. And, right, uh, right, right. But these are some of the examples right. of what. And it is. So the club, they decide what they want to do. We mm -hmm. vote on, on the different needs, the people okay. who ask for donations. Right. Uh, like in our, in our club uh, in Jaily World Falls Lions, uh, we found a big need to do vision screening uh, with the children, mm -hmm. the school children. Mm -hmm. We start from uh, preschool and go up. Mm -hmm. and, and Al and his wife Connie uh, do that, and they, I think they have the largest numbers of any, any uh, club in the state. So uh, where, where does this vision screening take place? You, you bought a device, I know you said that, with the $8,000, I think it was. And right. where do you use the vision screening device? The schools. So you bring the device they, to schools. We, we, we take it, we, we this past three years since we've had it, mm -hmm. we've screened almost 5,000 students. Wow. And in schools yeah. all, all the way from uh, Chelsea to Rumford, okay. Mexico, yeah. Buckfield. So you reach out to a school and say, we have this equipment and we're willing to come and offer this service to the students if the school wants you to. Is that how that works? That is, that is correct. Yeah. And some schools like in the J. Livermore Falls area, we're mm -hmm. only allowed to do the pre-K, the kindergartens, and the first graders. Mm -hmm. We go to Rumford or Mexico or to Buckfield, Dirigo, Chelsea or what have you. What we're doing from pre-Ks right up through freshmen in high school. Right, right. One, three, five, seven, and nine yeah. classes. 
in Farmington, we're, we're going to be starting Farmington next year. Great. And that one is only going to be the pre-Ks, the Ks, and the first graders. Mm -hmm. And we're going to get our foot in the door and, and show them what we can do. Right. How efficient it is. It only takes anywhere from 20 to 60 seconds to screen a child. Right. So I know that vision screening is just one of many different outreaches. You know, you just yeah, uh, mentioned some others and, you know, partnering with the school, that happens frequently. If they have needs, do you work with the Spruce Mountain School? We do. We, uh, we, we donate uh, a lot of their programs. For, uh, their robotic program, their mm -hmm. uh, 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 environmental program. We uh, they they're extremely active with that, and yeah. so we donate heavily there, and and also with their lo uh, Lego program, and mm -hmm. and we do some with the with the girls, uh, baseball, a, mm -hmm. a softball. Mm -hmm. uh, but whenever they come to us and say uh, they need something, we feel that's a good place for mm -hmm. to put the dollar. Yeah, and, and you, go ahead. And I gotta say, we also then. And like uh, the library came to us and they, they said, gee, we need some to update our computers. Can you give us a hand? So it's, it's needs like that that, mm -hmm. that we do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's great. I mean, I did hear I mean, part of the reason why I asked for you to be on the, on the show and, and talk with me is that I've heard from so many people that the work you do is really making an impact on the community. So, um, so I was so interested to hear more about it and, and learn about the club. So I, did you tell me that your club is one of the largest in Maine? Uh, the club isn't one of the largest. Uh, ours isn't one of the largest. We have uh, roughly 40 members in our, in our mm -hmm. club. Mm -hmm. uh, but I might mention that, uh, that we're uh, uh, probably on the top end of being, uh, of being active with our community. Okay. And for example, why I say that is is because uh, we buy eyeglasses for those who who, who qualify with our program, mm -hmm. and uh, we also started a hearing aid clinic, and we're the first ones club to start that, and, and at the present time, we're the only club that's actually doing that. And what do you do with the hearing aid clinic? In the hearing aid, we have a, a lion that's that's a hearing aid specialist, oh. and we collect uh, uh, old hearing aids, mm -hmm. unused hearing aids. And he refurbishes them, oh, nice. and so what we do after he refurbishes it, we give to an applicant an over-the-ear, one over-the-ear hearing aid, and all they have to pay for is the mold, oh, wow. which costs sixty-five dollars. Yeah, and we pay for the hearing aid. Yeah, and so right at this present time, uh, we do our clinic uh, on Saturdays, mm -hmm. uh, and that's when we have enough applicants to make it worthwhile to do the program. Right. And we do that at the chuck wagon in Livermore Falls. No kidding. And uh, they have been very nice. They let us use their back room. And yeah. So people sign up ahead of time to, to attend, or do they just show up on Saturday? No, they, uh, they put in an application mm -hmm. uh, to be qualified. Mm -hmm. And so once they're qualified, then they're notified on a date the that we're going to have the clinic. An appointment. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I'll tell you, that's been a very rewarding uh, a program. Uh, Absolutely. I've seen uh, uh, a couple of ladies actually come out crying yeah. because they could finally hear. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's, and that's the way lions get paid. We get paid through gratification. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, what, right, right, obviously with all service, right? You're serving people, and then when you meet someone's needs, that just, it, it does. It's very gratifying, very gratifying. Well, that's People ask me, why at the age of 85 are you going out on a regular weekly basis all fall, especially where we're going every week all over the right. central Maine area? Yeah. Why are you doing that at that age? And I said the gratification you get from it when you get the feedback of a child that you found that had to have eye surgery to correct something or right. glasses or various interventions that all of a sudden improved them. As an example, I believe it was down in the Turner area that we had a little guy that the teacher says, I've got a pre-K child that's got some kind of a problem that cannot work at the table doing hands-on stuff. Mm -hmm. 
we screened him and he was so far-sighted that he probably could see an ant walking over on Mount Washington <laughs> and the next day the parents took him to their eye doctor and he got eyeglasses mm -hmm. now was very involved in hands-on stuff he can see he was legally blind within three feet of him mm -hmm. there. yeah and and that took care of that and jump started him and he took right off mm -hmm. so your biggest yeah that's a wonderful story of what came about from having the screening device <laughs> So your biggest fundraiser, you, so, so in some, for some of these things, you reach out to the foundation and you ask for grants, you make grant requests. But for other things, you are raising money locally. And I, I know there's a various ways you're doing that, but your biggest, um, your biggest fundraiser is what? Your biggest fundraiser of the year? That's our, our home and trade show. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have that in the J Gymnasium uh, uh, on their school vacation time. And we do that for probably for a couple different reasons. One, of course, is to raise money. Mm -hmm. And another thing, our theme is, is to make public awareness of our local businesses. And we felt that's important to let people see the faces of these owners, owners get the exposure, mm -hmm. and to do business locally. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And that's been a very successful program. Uh, and... Uh, and then secondly, now we're going to expand that by having an informational speakers come in on our third Tuesday of the month, uh, just so they uh, inform the public on, uh, on health and on businesses mm -hmm. and on services. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the public, public will be invited in at that time. They can choose to have a dinner or not, which oh. will be put on by the VH. VFW. Okay. They serve an excellent meal. They only charge ten dollars. Wow. So uh, uh, we recommend they come in, have a little social time with yeah. us, and uh, have a nice dinner, and hear and hear from, from a local business right. or whatever on right. whenever they're so going. So you're so that's something the club is newly starting up. This yep. in and a, once a month on Tuesdays. You said what, uh, yeah. once a month on the third Tuesday. On the third Tuesday. And uh, for and example, where do you meet? Uh, what's that? Where do you meet? We meet at the VFW in J. Okay. Off, it's right off of 133. Yeah. And uh, it's an excellent place to meet. Yeah, We've got the room to bring in probably, I don't know, I think it's it bring in space. 80 to 100 people. Yeah, it's a big space. So, uh, and, uh, and the speakers, they vary. We're going to be talking on, uh, on uh, health benefits, say, of cannabis. Mm -hmm. That will be our first one. Then we're going to have... Uh, uh, a, a, a business coming in and telling the benefits of the new heat pumps that everybody's putting in now mm -hmm. and the cost savings on that and around. And uh, the Better Business is going to come in and uh, they're going to talk on uh, on scams and how to prevent it, how to be careful with it, mm -hmm. yeah, you know. And uh, and then we have a lady coming in that's going to be speaking on, on health foods and nutrition. And... Uh, so right, yeah. we got a pretty varied yeah. schedule coming up. Yeah, so. you do. Yeah, it's a great, it's a great uh, new venture, I think, for the club to, you know, have have more that you're offering the community. How do you make money with the home show? And I and I love the idea of the home show because, you know, it builds the community, right? So not only are you making money off that to give back to the community in in whatever ways they may need it, but also just to highlight who that community is and the businesses there that are all making it happen. I mean, so the home show is, is a great idea. And, um, but how exactly does that make money? Do, are the businesses paying for their booth space and then the people coming in pay a fee to, go, to attend as well or they're uh -huh. yeah. selling things there? How does that all work out? Well, we set up uh, booth areas mm -hmm. and we do. We sell a booth uh, to a vendor. Yes. Okay. And uh, it may be different prices. A regular, regular business uh, would be one price, and mm -hmm. if you had a, a a small local business, it might be another. Mm -hmm. But we do it from from the spaces. We make a little money on the attendance, and then we have a food booth where we make some money there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess we make some off a of fifty-fifty raffle as well. Yeah, and, yeah. and provide a little fun. And yeah. a little fun, yeah. and yeah. and uh, 
in the last few years, we to help bring the public in, we had chicken dinners on on Sundays and on Saturday we had uh, had uh, had lobsters, oh, my okay. whole lobster dinner, and that worked out pretty good. And but this year we decided to uh, work it up a little differently, and so this year we're going to uh, in the cafeteria area, area is set up a a raffle or each business can put in a a donation gift, mm -hmm. okay? And uh, so the public, when they come in, they can buy tickets for that right. and put it in whatever Right, whichever basket they want. They want it, yeah. Silent auction. And this is all, nice. it's a sil like, a, like a silent auction. Right. And it's all based on uh, on charity. Because mm -hmm. each business, when they put their name in, will put their, put in the charity charity they that their to money to. will go oh, to. Very okay? nice. So, uh, so all that money that goes in there will go to different charities. Right. And of course, uh, to give them the the, the businesses the benefit, I'll advertise on so, which 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 charity that right. that company uh, is Absolutely. going to give it to. Absolutely. And this, so you said it happens on school break. Is that February or April? April. Okay. I think it's the April twenty fourth and twenty fifth this year. Out the last weekend in April, the end of the yeah. April school vacation week. Right, right. Yeah, oh, good, good. That's good to know. So you guys are preparing for this year's upcoming one, and uh, yeah, it'll be a great event, I'm sure. So just before we we wrap up, um, how does a person become a member of Alliance Club? Well, a person becomes a member by invitation only, mm -hmm. okay? But if someone comes and starts to ask us questions about how becoming a lion uh, we try not to jump right on them, but we we tell we talk to them and make sure they're people who have, you know, good faith character, and stuff, and yeah. good character, mm -hmm. and uh, we invite them in. And so, anybody that's interested in serving, serving, or somebody has compassion for the world needs, mm -hmm. the Lions Club is probably one of the best organizations I believe, to where you can fully get rewarded and. Mm -hmm. Uh, for your efforts, and uh, all they have to do is uh, contact any Lion member, I don't care which club it is, mm -hmm. and uh, say they show they some interest, and normally they'll be invited to a meeting, they'll get a free meal, and, uh, and they'll start learning some about it, and somebody will be more than willing to sponsor them, mm -hmm. and our dues are very inexpensive, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, our dues for a single member is sixty dollars a year. This is in our club, mm -hmm. and it, and that's pretty much standard, but some are different. Right. And uh, and then that's uh, prorated by by the month. And for example, if somebody wanted to become a lion now, I think it cost them thirty dollars. Yeah, that's right. Finish out the year. Very good. So uh, that's how. And I uh, many many lions who become uh, people who become lion members, they hang in there once they get. They do something to where well, they feel they've done uh, done some right. good for the community right. or, or an individual. Right. So they like it enough that they're staying and they become they're you know they keep their activity in. Yeah, they're... like I'm I've been in a member for 28 years and because of health and 50 plus yeah. and but that you'll find that all over the state. Yeah. And all over the world. Yeah. Uh, That's great. That's yeah. Great. Well, thank you so much, for both of you, for your service to the area and. You know how you've kept this going and really just you know continue to serve I mean obviously that's where your heart is and there is reward in it but there's that's that's your time right your time and your energy that you're pouring back into the community so thank you for that I know you've as I said before I know you've made an impact because people were telling me so yeah so thank you so much for your time being I'm here so too. pleased to hear that yeah I'm developing a questionnaire right now to go out to the communities that we serve, or what can we do mm -hmm. to serve you better? Right. Perfect. To, 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 to improve yeah. things. What, what else can we do? Yeah, so that's such a, such a great idea. Reach out and find out if you're affecting the right things or not. So right. very good. Uh, what, cool. what else can we do? Very good. Well, thank uh, you. Thank you so much both for being here. And thank you all for joining us today on Our Towns. We learned more about the Lions Club. And if you have a heart to serve, I think uh, this organization is definitely worth checking out. Obviously, it's by invitation only, but if you show up and say, I want to help, I'm sure that you would find a way to fit in. So again, thanks for joining us on Our Towns. I am Senator Lisa Keim, and just so pleased that you joined us today.